Hi everyone. Today I would like to present a new listener that is going to share a little bit of our listening session with us. So everyone meet Ayla. Ayla, say hello. There, there. No. Hi. I hope you're doing well. And we are here today to make a new video together about another older recording, which is our main topic. Um, my idea is to share with you why to listen to those older recordings and maybe also how to listen to them, what to pay attention on. So we are going to listen to a piece for piano. This is the Ravel uh, Piano Concerto in G and that's the second movement. Um, that's one of my very, very, very beloved pieces for uh, piano and um, with my origins as I am born in France and I grew up in France, I was studying in France, I'm very happy to have this um, cultural education uh, in me. I find that this concerto, Ravel concerto, is an unbelievable, beautiful piece of uh, French music actually. So the performer today will be uh, Marguerite Long. I guess you all heard this name at least once, uh, maybe for the competition, uh, Long Thibault, or for any other reasons. Actually, Marguerite Long was a wonderful, marvelous pianist herself. The recording we're going to listen to is from 1932. Ravel was still alive. Um, Orchestre L'Amoureux, for the French people, you of course know about it. For uh, the non-French, uh, that's a very, very historic, important orchestra uh, in France. Okay, let's jump into the recording now. I would like to influence your listening before we start so that we pay attention on the same elements, you and me. The first element that I would like you to pay attention on is the pulse. If you don't feel the pulse, uh, the music that you're going to make is not going to be as strong and as grounded and as understandable for the audience as if you have pulse. It's very important that pulse doesn't become just metronome. If you want to learn to have a pulse, obviously to practice with metronome helps, but the most important of that kind of practicing is to be able to play without metronome as you have a metronome, but still be free in your musicality, still feeling a pulse. Your pulse can decelerate, it can accelerate. Everything can happen with, with your pulse, but you must have it. Um, if you're able to feel a pulse during your phrase, like very basic, one, two, three, four, as a pulse permanently, constantly, you will realize that you actually have to shape your idea, your musical idea, your phrasing, you have to shape it within this pulse. I would like you to pay attention very much on the pulse and also how does she take some little little, very little uh, liberties and freedom within her pulse. This is what was mind-blowing for me back then when I heard uh, this recording. How can one feel a pulse and still have those little surprises which are above the pulse but still, generally speaking, it's a permanent, constant moving with the pulse. So... I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
So, I hope you enjoyed this recording as much as I did. I think to be clear about the aspect of pulse, which Madame Marguerite Long used now, is a breathing. How does one breathe? This is, of course, then connecting us also to the heartbeat. Um, the process of walking, we do it with a pulse. We never walk faster and slower and faster and slower just in the middle of nowhere when we walk and when we want to enjoy our walk. My point is that pulse is as important as classical music. Uh, when you tell a story, because this is something we talked about already a lot, when you tell a story and you want the audience to follow you, you have to give them a pulse. You have to give them a certain frame in which the audience will find themselves. The pulse of Marguerite Long is, for me, so present, but it's never metronomical. If you actually put a metronome, it's not metronomical, but it's there. And the pulse she has in the left hand, in the accompaniment, let's say, to her melody in the right, is just the ideal balance between leading and accompanying. If one would play the melody alone on the right hand, one should still hear the accompaniment in the left hand, obviously. When one practices the left hand with the accompaniment, one obviously hears the melody in the right one. Why am I talking about this uh, polyphonic uh, practicing? Because very often for us violinists, I would say we are a little too focused on our melodies, or even if it's a rhythmical passage, we're still like working intonation and sound and all this, and of course this is very important, but what is even more important before we understand how this passage is going to sound is to know exactly what kind of pulse does this passage have. Once you start to feel this pulse by projecting yourself into the accompaniment which is behind, whenever this accompaniment comes, finally, when you finished practicing alone and you have the possibility uh, to play with an orchestra, which in certain cases accompanying you, then instead of just accompanying you, for you it becomes a main part of the music because you realize, oh, I practice this pulse thing and I practice this leading thing and now I'm playing with the orchestra perfectly together. Um, another very important uh, moment of pulse, feeling the pulse, is that when now instead of just saying accompaniment, when you make chamber music, uh, when you play sonatas, for example, now I'm talking as a violinist, in order to um, avoid many uncomfortable situations which can happen because you have the impression that the pianist is not with you, uh, very often that happens because your pulse or your way to express your pulse might not be extremely clear. And once again, I would love to encourage all of you to really, I'm obviously talking to a maybe younger generation of artists, pay attention on how do you control your pulse, how do you feel your pulse, pulse and then record yourself. Record yourself and listen to it. Because very often we don't hear what we actually do. We just hear a very beautiful state while playing. Listen to the recording and see, is that very clear pulse-wise? Um, is a friend, pianist, colleague, is he going to be able or she uh, to follow you? Is a conductor going to be able to understand you and follow you? And moreover, of course, then a whole orchestra or if you're playing in a trio, quartet, quintet, etc., etc., etc. So whenever you practice alone, practice with pulse, with pulse, with pulse, always with pulse. Uh, never forget about the pulse being actually one of the first elements together with sound. Obviously, without sound, there is nothing. Uh, for violinists, then intonation. Uh, those are three elements sound, intonation and pulse. If you don't play with those ones, it will be very hard for anyone to take you very seriously. Um, now to talk about the little rubatos 
that uh, Marguerite Long is doing. The rubatos. A rubato, basically, as everyone knows already, it's, it's come from Italian um, to steal. Um, where you have to steal time, you have to give back time. Uh, very often, we think about rubato mostly like taking the time. Taking the time, okay, but music wants you to give back as well, or vice versa. If you give a bit of time to a phrase, then you have to take the time afterwards. Uh, this is a notion where it becomes a slightly more mathematical, I would say, but it's a matter of feeling, feeling the pulse. So if you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can start to make a little rubato inside of this pulse. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, etc., etc. You can start to travel a little bit around the beats, but if you keep the beat in the background of the metronome, it should still stay rhythmical. And then you can have this kind of rubato atmosphere, but never do it too much if you want to enjoy the simplicity and the beauty of a music uh, try to keep it cool with the rubato and the rubato that you do should always fit the atmosphere of the music you're playing like in the recording we listened today of Marguerite Long where we had a perfect feeling of pulse where her rubatos were extremely tiny and very delicate so simplic simplicity is the key, basically. Simple, uh, not taking too much attention on, on the rubato itself, so that the atmosphere of the music still stays almost untouched. Um, this is, to me, one of the keys of the great old recordings of the great old masters. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the brilliant, elegant, simple and beautiful uh, playing of Marguerite Long in this Ravel Concerto second movement. Um, and I hope my little insight about the pulse uh, was, let's say, um, interesting enough for you. Um, all the best and see you in next video.